Before we get started, make sure you go over to flagfootballwithcoachd.com and you could subscribe here or here to get 10% off all of our playbooks instantly. If you're looking for proven plays, we have everything you need here. We have our full playbook with over 130 plays now. We have age-based playbooks with practice schedules and plays for each age group and more. These are sorted by popularity. You can find 6v6, 7v7, and more. You have testimonials, and we just added our most popular videos page, so pretty much you can have a one-stop shop for all your flag football needs. Go ahead and subscribe here or down here, and I'll get that code to you instantly. Now let's jump into today's video. Hi everyone, this is Coach D, and recently I've been getting a lot of questions on defense. How do I stick with a fast receiver? How can I get faster? How can I become more agile and, and more mobile myself so that as they cut, I don't get lost and get beat deep? Now as coaches, you're thinking, okay, who am I gonna put in the back? right, as my monster, who's maybe a speedster, okay. Or can I help all of the team members increase their speed, increase their ability to cut, increase their ability to stay with a fast receiver so that you can move people around? We've gotta get back to the basics and get some fundamentals, and that's what I'm gonna teach you today. Now, before we get started, it's about to rain, so I wanna make sure that you grab my full playbook. Look, this full playbook gives you everything you need. If you're a first time coach, you're gonna need templates. You're gonna need practice schedules. You're gonna need plays. All of that is included in my full playbook. It's usually like $50. It was $100 to begin with. Now it's only $24.95. Make sure you click the link down below. It's got over 120 plays, and I'm not gonna sit here and sell you on it, but I walk you through every single play in exclusive videos so you know for your age group exactly which plays to use, when to use them, which formations to use, all of that is included in my full playbook. So before you get started on this, go ahead and grab that so you can feel confident that when you walk out there, you know exactly what you're doing. And with that, let's jump into how do I stay with a fast receiver, okay? This one's for our DBs and our cornerbacks. Now, as you can see, I've got my yard here set up with what I call an obstacle course. Kids love an obstacle course, so what I've set up is just a simple obstacle course on an incline. You can see there's a little bit of an incline. And so what I wanna do is any of the drills for defensive backs or speed, anything where I'm trying to build speed, I want that to be on an incline so they are having to struggle to do the moves, all right? So if you have a hill, if you have, and I'll show you a few places where I like to do it, you want these to be on an uphill so they're constantly pushing, so when they're on flat ground, it becomes a lot easier and that speed automatically moves. So let's talk a couple key principles on the defensive back or the cornerbacks, safeties, etc. Let's talk a couple key things. If I'm trying to increase my speed or stay with a fast receiver, first thing I need, right here, you gotta have the cleats. Now, I know with COVID and with, with everything else, budgets are tight, there are ways to find cleats. But if you're trying to stay with a fast receiver who has cleats, most of these, these young kids, they're gonna get the cleats if they're fast and they wanna be able to cut and hit their routes, you have to have cleats. So my highest recommendation is to get cleats. The worst thing that happens is I'm following a fast receiver, all of a sudden they cut and I slide, now I'm gone. All my fundamentals don't matter if I'm playing catch up. So number one, make sure you have cleats, right? Proper gear. Second thing I like to talk about is my position, right? My stance. So I've got a wide receiver right in front of me and I'm about, let's say a yard off, depending on if I'm doing man to man or if I'm doing zone, I might be about five yards off. And most leagues, especially in flag football, there's no, right? 
You can't push them. You can't like, oh, you can't hit them five yards off. So most of the time you're not gonna be able to give them a quick little like you can in the NFL or in college or in tackle. Usually you can just give them a little bit and that pushes them off. So you gotta stay with them from the very beginning. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna get a nice clean stance. You want your back to be flat, right? And you wanna stay low. You wanna have your arms relaxed, ready to go. And what you're looking at is you're looking at the waist, right? You're looking at the belt. You're looking at right here. Because no matter what I do with my head, some people like to look at the eyes, right? Some people will look at the quarterback. But I like to look right here, okay? And I'll keep an eye on the quarterback as well, just to see count and a couple other things. If you're in the higher grade or you're working with a more advanced team, they might go on one, hut, hut, right? And you wanna make sure that you're staying with that. So you might watch, right? You might keep an eye there, but most likely I'm gonna keep an eye right here because no matter how I juke, see what happens here, this is really what's gonna tell me where they're going. So even if they go this way or that way, fundamentals, I'm watching their waist the entire time. So I've got my comfortable stance, right? And I've got my dominant foot in front. So I'm right footed, right? And I'm ready. So I can easily come right off of the line. If I go the other way, right? I'm not as comfortable with that. So in gymnastics and a few others, they always talk about the dominant foot. Well, you wanna have your dominant foot up front, dug in, ready to go. You're watching the waist and you're ready. So that the second it happens, you're going backwards. Now, one of the most important skills as a defensive back is being able to go backwards. So let's <clears throat> talk about our drill here to help our kids do this. Now, if you don't have cones, if you're a parent, you can easily do that. I'm at the backyard, right? You can, you can do this at the park. If there's an uphill, I really like the uphill. Um, but use cans, anything, anything that you have in the house you can use. But let me walk you through this. One cone here, okay, and I'll walk you through it so you can see how I set it up. I like to mix up my cones so that they're not just equally spread apart because I need to be able to be mobile and agile and follow the receiver. So I'm keeping my head up, I'm in the stance, and on ready go, I'm just gonna move backwards. Now, a lot of kids will start to look back. They'll start to go like this. No, 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 no. Go slow first. Go slow first. I'm keeping my form. I'm, I'm doing a nice little movement with my arms, okay? And you'll see the Deion Sanders of the world, they're, they're keeping it low. Okay, and they're staying with them and they're keeping their eyes right on that gut right here. And maybe every once in a while I'll look. So I'm keeping my eye, you're, you're the gut right here. And every once in a while I might look at the quarterback, right? Look at the eyes of the quarterback. So I know, but I wanna make sure I'm sticking with my receiver. So I go back here. The second I see out of the corner of my eye, this, this cone here, Okay, we're talking maybe about 10 yards, but uphill. Now I'm gonna sprint to the next one. Keep low, right? Why do I do that? Well, maybe they're gonna cut in and out, right? They may do a, a quick move. I wanna be able to quickly adjust right when I get there, boom. Or there could be a handoff, so I wanna make sure that I'm ready for that. If there's a handoff, I don't want to be chasing some guy 30 yards down the road when they've handed it off here. So I go here. Now I move up, staying with a level, right? Eye level. Boom. As if I'm looking here. Then I go back again. Okay. And now it's a little bit closer. So I see that and I go right back to it. Now what I've done here is I've made these a little bit shorter. So this is like 10 yards. This might be like seven yards. 
this is gonna be like five yards, right? So I get an idea of how fast. I wanna mix it up so that my body learns how to, okay, I've, if I wanted to stop on a dime at 10 yards, that takes a little bit something different than if I needed to do that in five yards, right? So I wanna mix those up a little bit, those distances from here to the other side, right? So mix those up. This is like, again, a, a great little obstacle course. Mix it up here. Now I'm gonna go backwards. I'm not looking here, otherwise I could trip. I'm not doing any of this. I'm not even standing up straight and doing that. That will not help you. Stick with it. And now, I'm gonna go down, like I'm pulling flags. And now, I'm gonna introduce an additional speed and agility drill at the end, okay? So then, quick feet, quick feet, up a hill, up a hill, up a hill, up a hill, up a hill. Okay, so I've done that. Now watch. Now that I've done that, remember there's a couple key things I'm working on. I'm not only working on the back pedal, I also need to know how to cut. So watch what happens. I finish here. Now I'm gonna go and I have a nice little zone. I can work cone to cone, right? So I can run right to it. <laughs> Keeping straight, right? I'm not with the football. I'm now with my defense, keeping open. <laughs> so this obstacle course works in several ways. It starts with the back pedal. Then I have an agility ladder. And if you don't have one, I'll put some links down below to some other videos where you can see some other options for that. And then now I can work on cutting. So let's do it one more time all together. And if I pass out, just, you know, keep watching. Should be fun. <laughs> Ready, go, up, eyes are up. I'm looking up, eyes are up. I'm going uphill, up, up, and if they're not good at this yet, that's okay, they will be, uphill. Now, uphill. Ah. Ah. Now, let me show you a couple uphill areas that you can use as well. Find your uphills, your inclines around your house or at the park. You know the ones I'm talking about and just make them do it. Up. Come right down. I'm going up. Right? I do it over and over and over, right? That's gonna help with that speed on those legs. What about this one? Over time, we'll give them the speed and that agility to be able to stay with those wide receivers, right? Keep the fundamentals in check. Make sure you're not just doing this. I don't want to do this. Uh-uh. I keep with the fundamentals, right? So coaches, I'm coaching in the moment to make sure that their form is right as they're doing it, right? Look, this is what the Patriots did, love them or hate them. They would go up and down hills. So in the fourth quarter, everybody else would be like, huh, huh, and they'd be like, let's do it. We're not worn out. We've been doing this forever. So conditioning 101. This is Coach D. If you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe, comment. You guys have been commenting like crazy. Go ahead and share this with your network. Of course, give it a nice thumbs up. 
And if you're looking for playbooks, go to flagfootballwithcoachd.com. You'll see playbooks, some of my favorite videos. Everything is right there. And if you're looking for the full playbook, has everything you need for only $24.95, just click on the link below that says full playbook, and you can grab that, and you are set for the season. Guys, take care. We'll see you in the next video.